You spend hours trying to paint something in Quill. You think it looks pretty good. You bring it to Blender trying to render. And this is how it looks. Well, today we're gonna try to change this into something softer and more appealing that also casts shadows. Still a little bit flat. And another method that's a little bit complicated, but you get way more volume and you can actually use highlights. <laughs> Well, before you get too far in Blender, I just want to take a step back in Quill and talk about the different ways of building models. Um, my favorite method is the one that you're seeing right now, and it's based on what I've seen Daniel Pesce do on his live streams. I highly recommend people checking uh, both his channel and the Virtual Animation YouTube channel. I don't know if he invented this way of painting in Quill, but he was the first one that I seen using and teaching, and uh, it's my favorite way so far. So uh, it's the way you get the most amount of detail and freedom to to explore any shapes you like. It is time consuming though, so you gotta keep that in mind. Another very popular way of building characters in Quill is by using the lattice modes. Uh, I first saw this method being used by Guru Fujita, and it's a very efficient method, very fast to get a good results, and you get a very nice base to paint on, so you can have nice gradients and, and soft textures spread across the, the surface. But the downside is you can't get the nice change of planes that you can get with the Daniel Page method, and well, at least I can't. I think it works better for like little creatures and things like that. I think I see Goro using this more on his uh, daily animations, uh, where getting things out really fast is the main focus. This third method that I'm trying is what I saw Johnny Belmont doing. He's very efficient with the amount of strokes and the poly counts, pretty much like one stroke for the head, one stroke for the nose. Uh, I didn't do a good job, I don't make it justice. You should check out his work in order to see a better example of this method, but I just needed something for the renders. Okay, I imported the the heads from Quill in, in Blender. I'm using Alembic files to transfer and I just check the extra attributes and export animation boxes. Nothing fancy to it. Uh, this is pretty much what you're gonna see when you import anything. Uh, and I pre made, like, I added a couple lights and pre made materials, but the material, there's nothing fancy on those materials. Uh, there is only one thing that, that I wanna focus on is to get this looking smooth, you're gonna need to manipulate the normals somehow, right? Uh, I chose two different methods to do it. And one is like quick and dirty, it looks okay, it looks flat, but, but you get nice shadows. I think it's what I have on right now. Uh, oh no, right now I have like straight out of the box. Uh, in order for you to connect the colors, uh, you just need to, to get an attribute node. You get that by doing Shift A. Uh, sorry, Shift A, search, and you get attribute and you type RGBA under the name here before you connect. Uh, I used a couple curve nodes here just to, to bend the colors a little bit because I used linear and I don't know, they were looking too dark. Um, anyways, the, the first thing, the first method, it looks a little bit flat and the way to achieve that one but you, you can you still like using a real material with lights and everything, right? So let me connect this material. And this is what you're gonna get with this method. Uh, you can tell you're getting cast shadows. Uh, it looks all right. You can kind of see, oh, I think I have occlusion on here. Let me turn off occlusion. Yeah, you can kind of see the 
the sausages, right? Like uh, the <laughs> the little tubes that we're trying to get rid of uh, uh, on on this one, but only on the shadows, and uh, it depends on the amount of contrast that you have and everything. But only by adding these nodes, the sorry, only by adding these normal nodes and playing with this a little bit. So the here is the downside. Depending on the angle that you have the normals bending combined with the uh, camera position, you might get like a, a white stripe across your render. So you, you kind of have to play through the animation, see if that's happening and if that's annoying you or not. But yeah, so th yeah, this match is pretty quick and it does the job for for a lot of the cases, especially for something very stylized that you just want to like pretty much what you had in Quill, but you, now you can use real lights to, to have like a rim light like I have here or like a little bit of cast shadows uh, and uh, depth of field. I don't have depth of field uh, on now. But I think that's one of the best things you can do there. Like it, it just makes your render pop way, way more, right? Uh, the downside of this method is other than the that white stripe that, that was showing, depending on the, where you have your normals, is even like you can play a lot with this spec, uh, speckler and roughness, but not much changes. You just get more washed out. So. Yeah, basically this, uh, you're kind of like stuck with this level. Uh, it's pretty flat and you're not gonna get a lot of material information, right? Uh, the other method, I already pre-made here, but I'm gonna show you the process. So, uh, just talk about a little bit how. Okay, so still pretty soft, but you can see like I, I, I left on purpose a little bit of uh, roughness here, like for us to play with, but so you can get some highlights. Uh, I don't recommend because I don't think it looks the best, but you get like better shadows overall and way more volume. So I think this is my favorite method so far. Out of everything I tried, this is what got me the best results. The downside is it takes a little bit of work to get it working, and it takes uh, a lot of uh, hard work to, <laughs> to actually render out. So with the method that I just showed you before, uh, you can render full animation in seconds. It's not going to be a problem on Eevee, but with this one, uh, it's gonna take like a minute to calculate every frame just because the it's projecting for another mesh and it's not the render that's taking long it's every time it changes the render uh, the frame it's reprojecting right so it takes a little bit to calculate that and enough of me bubbling around let me just get to to how you get these results uh, you see that this looks very different now too, right? I'm gonna get rid of those other two. And I uh, just wanna focus on, on this guy. Let me delete that. I mean this lady. So her um this looks way different, right? Like the one we had before, even on the viewport here. No, uh, the main thing is this modifier that I'm using, data transfer. You might have seen this being used around to, to bend normals. So that's pretty much the difference you're gonna get. And okay, let's build this from scratch, pretty much what I did there. Uh, okay, so Step number one here is you gotta duplicate your mesh. 
and I'm gonna before I hide this I'm just gonna usually what I do is I, I make another collection for it new collection and projection that way I can turn off the whole collection uh, and and I'm sure nothing is gonna render because sometimes you have things uh, hidden on the view parts, but they, they still render uh, on the render time, so you have to render again. And like to avoid that kind of thing, I just uh, put everything on the collection and I turn off the collection when it's time. Uh, but right now it's not time yet, and I'm just gonna hide this. Uh, I mean, not hide, uh, isolate. And on the duplicates that I created, uh, I'm gonna go to modifiers and I cannot delete this because it has animation to it. So if I if I get rid of this, it's gonna get rid of my cached animation from the Olympic file. Uh, but on top of this, I'm gonna add a few modifiers, not just the one. Uh, first one that I'm gonna add is gonna be uh, this place uh, scale from quill to blender is a little bit off in my case here so I need like a pure small value let's do 0 0.01 still too much 0 0.001 okay that's uh, what I was expecting to see and uh, like right click shade smooth it helps a little bit right uh, just on the viewport, it's not gonna make a difference right now. Uh, so before I'm, I'm gonna do a remesh, but before I do the remesh, I'm gonna add the just a, a subdivision node. And on this one, I'm gonna yeah, just the one is fine. Just the one subdivision is fine. And on top of that, I'm gonna add the remesh. Again, because scale is a little, a little off, I need a smaller volume here. I think if I add a couple zeros here, it's enough. Oh, that's too much. Yeah, it was too much. Okay. This is kind of what I was looking for. But let's do another zero and seven. Okay, better. Five. There it goes. I'm trying to get rid of this hole in the mesh here. So maybe three. If it doesn't, okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, a little bit more de detailed than I would like. Um, smooth shading is always good to turn on. It's a little bit better. And you can always add another uh, subdivision level on top of this. Uh, if you look at the wireframe, oh, I have things off here. Sorry. Uh, if you look at the wireframe, there is some artifacts right on the mesh, but the mesh is not that high res, anyways. Um, I'm yet to try decimating the mesh on top of this, but I think it's only going to slow things down even more. You know what? I'm going to go back to 5 because I think, yeah, this is the amount of detail I want to have, but then I'm going to go back here to the displays and have this at 3. So it inflates the model a little bit more. And just to get rid of the hole in the eye. Anyways, you don't need to be a perfectionist with this. Uh, like, whatever you get, it's fine. Um, okay, do I do another subdivision level? Let's do it. Uh, so another subdivision surface on top of everything just to, to get things looking a little crispier okay 
so now you understand why I said this method is pretty slow. It's uh, both slow to slow to create the all the steps and slow to to render. So it is what it is, right? Uh, okay. So if you look, uh, and again, it, it gets slow to render because it, it has to apply all those modifiers to every single frame because next frame this mesh sequence cache is going to bring another mesh and all this is going to be applied on top so it takes a minute uh okay so i don't need this guy anymore i can just turn off this collection and stroke zero one is the is the mesh that i'm gonna need to remember the name okay back to our uh, by default this is off the auto smooth so you need that on for for this method to work so uh and then here on the modifier stack again we only have the mesh sequence cache uh i'm gonna bring the data transfer and on the data transfer is pretty simple what you need to do just choose the mat the mesh that you created now with all those modifiers And it's even giving me a warning here, like the uh, computation might be slow. Indeed, it is. And okay, face corner data is what I need, and custom normals. So just by turning that on, you're already gonna. Okay, I apologize that I, I forgot about the. Turning off the thing there. Huh. I didn't notice that hole in the mesh before. Anyways, so you can see that these strokes bl blend with each other much nicer now. Uh, you can play with the different kinds of projection here. Uh, I think the I never remember which one I got the best results last time. Definitely not this one. Yeah, I think this is the one. I'm gonna turn on EV again. And those artifacts are not that visible in the render time. Like the artifacts that I was pointing out before, like the little weirdness right like that's just from the from the viewport but yeah that's pretty much it uh as i mentioned like i did a quick and dirty animation on the those witches just to just to show you like that this works with animation too not just with uh single frames uh but it is much easier on single frames than on animation because as i mentioned takes some time um Okay, let me show you how it looked after rendering the animation. Well, now that I'm editing the video, I realized there was something that I forgot to mention. And this is gonna make your your renders look five times better. Be right back.